Dave Scott, and I've got a few tips for you during the off season. I think when we look at the off season, people define it as slow, long, easy distance, very easy aerobic training. I think we're missing one huge element. Uh, I've always thought, why during the off season do we allow our fast twitch muscle fibers to lie dormant? Uh, they need to be perked and primed, just like the slow ones. You certainly need to build the, the base in your aerobic machinery, but don't neglect stimulating the fast twitch 2A muscle fibers. Those are the ones that actually help the slow twitch ones. So how do you do that? On the swim, uh, I like to use a wide variety, and I think we can incorporate a wide variety of skills and techniques. For example, uh, most of us are pretty uh, weak in our core. We look at our core, we look at our uh, abdominal muscles through our pelvic girdle, our upper thigh, and we flip ourselves over upper hamstring, glutes, low and mid back. And if you do dolphin kick on your back with fins, or back flutter kick, or you incorporate butterfly swimming, and a lot of you think, gee, I can't do butterfly, well, with fins on, you're going to find it a lot easier. So, for example, you might do a set of 8 to 12 to 16, 25, doing that combination that I just said. Another one that I really like is actually to do a breaststroke pull, because it allows you to set your elbows similar to freestyle, even though the pulling mechanic is out a little bit wider. So you do a breaststroke pull with a flutter kick with your head above the water, just like you're carrying on a conversation with someone on the pool deck. Uh, it forces you to have a faster turnover, it loads your arms and your shoulders, and you certainly feel this all the way through your back and your core. And if you're doing a flutter kick with your fins on, you're going to feel this all the way through your hips and your thighs. Those are just quick examples. Uh, incorporate the faster element into all of your swim workouts and I look for uh, sets that are relatively short in distance from 15 meters to about 75 meters or yards and allow enough recovery so that you can bring up the rev rate on these. These will really help. Six to nine minutes faster swimming. On the bike you've got a lot of different options but one thing that we want to be careful with in the off season is not to overload the force on the pedal by going to a bigger or harder gear. So if you're doing faster repeats in this time block, try to stay in a little lower gear. Uh, an example that you can use is a slight gradient, and even on an indoor bike you can simulate, simulate that by standing up and sitting down. Uh, so if I have a 45 second segment, I might do 6 to 10 to 12 repeats of 45 seconds, predominantly a lower gear. However, if you're a little fitter, and as you go through this off season, I do a set called a spin up and you can start a nice low gear around 105 to 110 RPMs and every 8 to 12 seconds you shift to the next harder gear. So if I'm doing a block of 45 seconds there might be five to six shifts during that time period so you're finishing in a harder gear and try to maintain that really high uh, revolutions. Again give yourself enough recovery and that might be a work of one to a two rest ratio, so it might be 45 seconds on, 90 seconds off. Running, one of the things that we actually did today on the run was to use a hill, and there's a couple theories that I have uh, regarding hill training. One is that we want to try to develop that muscular endurance or sustained strength. So if you have a longer hill, or if you use a treadmill, around four to six percent, because you can fire your vastus medialis, the muscle on the inside of your knee, and use a longer hill of anywhere between three minutes to about eight minutes, steady pace, predominantly aerobic. But the fast twitch ones are also stimulated by a faster turnover. So the example that we did today at the end of the workout was to use a 20 second hill and we tried to make sure that the foot was landing nice and solid so we weren't getting any wobble when the foot made contact with the ground. We weren't crossing our arms or in front of our, our bodies and we we're keeping our head and our hips and our chest up nice and high so that we're running nice and erect and we're not bent over like an old man. So you can use a shorter hill, good form, and by good form what's going to happen is, is, is you're going to be able to stretch your hip flexors just a little bit and put your hip in hip extension which is going to help fire your glutes as well. So a trade-off in running is to use a shorter hill, allow enough recovery time quite often a one to two or one to three work to rest ratio and stay within that 15 seconds to 45 seconds. That's a great range. Hope that helps and start right away. It'll pay dividends when the season begins.